Good morning once again. And you are welcome to this business registration masterclass. This is a webinar that uh, URSB is uh, coordinating with uh, the team from Opportunities Are Here, is working under the International Trade Center. And uh, we are glad that we get to collaborate with them in this project. You know, it has been an exciting project, especially for those in the film industry. And we believe that many of you uh, are in that industry, those that, that are on call right now. And we are excited that you can join us for this very important webinar. My name is Mark Tugube. I am a senior officer with the Directorate of Intellectual Property here at Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Uh, last week, for those of us that were part of the session, we had an intellectual property masterclass just to have an understanding of intellectual property, uh, what it entails, what that means, especially for, uh, for those in the film industry and some of the things that you should uh, take consideration of, especially in your practice, in your industry, and how you operate in your business as well. And it was a very enlightening session. Uh, many of you had asked uh, as well for the presentations, but all those were also shared with the team from Opportunities Are Here that helped uh, just disseminate that information to each and every one of you. So because we believe the film industry has uh, quite a lot of business going on, we say that it shouldn't only be the intellectual property that is given to you, uh, all this information, but also information regarding business registration. So some of you are wondering what it takes to register a business name, uh, what it takes to register a company, what does that look like, what should I have, what should I take consideration of even as I start, uh, because formalization of your businesses, as you realize, is very important even when it comes to the creative industry. Uh, some of you have stories where there are people who didn't even listen to you or give you an offer of what you should, of, 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 you know, what uh, give you a listening ear of what you're offering because your business was not formalized. Uh, so we're going to be learning. Uh, we're going to be learning all that. And we have a facilitator online, uh, Miss Charlotte Mudola, who is also a colleague here who works at URSP. So without wasting any more time, we'll get into uh, her presentation, and I'll invite Charlotte Mudola to take us through her presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for logging into this webinar and hope it will be educative and helpful to every one of you. Uh, let me share my screen, uh, my presentation for easy following and uh, access. Um, uh, as we start, basically, Uganda Registration Services Bureau is a semi-autonomous body established by the uh, laws of Uganda, and uh, we are mandated to carry out different roles as URSB. Uh, as uh, URSB, we register companies, uh, we handle company registration, uh, incorporation, and business registration. We also do intellectual property rights. Uh, I believe most of us now have an idea what intellectual property rights, the in-depth idea of what intellectual property rights are. Then we also do civil registration. Uh, basically, we, um, <clears throat> we handle marriages and register all marriages in Uganda at the moment. Then we also handle collateral registry for immovable property. And also we are the official receiver uh, in insolvency matters. Um, under, uh, under the business uh, registration, under the business registration uh, system, we do name reservation. Uh, we register business names, uh, company registration. Uh, we handle amendments. Amendments include registering resolutions, uh, different company forms, different charges, and so many other different. Uh, company related matters after registration because after registration of course the company does different co uh, transactions uh, to for continuous operation and then we also do certifications uh, we register the annual returns uh, we do data searches and we further do dispute re resolutions for different um, uh, for different uh, issues in uh, in company matters um, Charlotte is it possible to share yes. you uh, the screen in presenter mode. Um, okay, let me let me do that. Uh, give me a moment. Okay. 
you I think you can just uh, the top left. Or you can do right down the bottom menu, there's uh, that icon that puts like a wine glass. Uh, has it worked? Uh, no, not yet. If you could just uh, go down where you see notes, comments, so towards the right. There is an icon that looks like a wine glass. It is right next to that scale that has 78%. Yes, that I can. Perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, what uh, the different uh, services we offer uh, under the business uh, directorate, uh, what the dispute resolution, uh, URSB is mandated by different laws to carry out its uh, different functions as URSB. Um, as you can see, we use the Companies Act, uh, the Companies Amendment Act, and recently uh, the Our Companies Act was uh, amended to cater for beneficial ownership and so many other factors. We also have the Business uh, Name Registration Act and its amendment, which also further catered for big beneficial ownership uh, registration and information as required by FI and the law. Then we also have uh, the Partnerships Act and its amendment, which also further catered for beneficial ownership for partnerships. Uh, we have the building societies, uh, which is also one of the new requirements we do under our online business registration. We register building societies and its regulations. Uh, basically, we have so many amendments and recently, uh, we had uh, the company's regulations amended uh, in 2023, and uh, also the fees, uh, as we shall go forward, uh, we have the company's fees reg regulations of 2024, which uh, amended the, the, the fees for registration for the different types of companies and business names. Um, basically, business names, business names include sole proprietorships uh, and partnerships. Uh, where a sole proprietor, uh, you are sole owner in um, uh, this business, uh, you own it as one person. Uh, basically, it's in you know, a small scale. And for such business names, you the difference between companies, you don't have to have the, the, the word limited uh, in your name uh, as a sole proprietor. Then we have partnerships where you have more than um, where you have more than one person, and you come together as individuals uh, to form a partnership. Uh, and that's the difference between a sole proprietorship and a partnership. Um, we are going to talk about reservation of a name of a business. Uh, we're going to start with business names. Uh, why should you reserve your name? Uh, basically, before doing any form of registration, um, some uh, anyone or an entity or someone interested in registering a business name, you must reserve your name. Uh, it's a form of uh, notifying that you're interested in registering a business, but also it's to make it in simple terms, basically your booking to say that you're the owner of the name, you intend to register uh, such a name. And in case anyone tries to reserve or register the same name, uh, it's already on record. However, reservation doesn't mean you've registered and your name is safe because it has a time limit. Uh, it's, it's, it has 30 days. So after 30 days, if you've not registered your name, I mean, if you've not registered after reservation in 30 days, the, the name uh, expires, the reservation does expire, and someone else can actually come up and take up your name. So when you reserve your name, do not relax and sit back and think you've, you're finished with the whole process. 
you actually immediately, immediately you have to actually go ahead and register uh, your business so as to fully get a certificate and protect uh, your name as a, a known of a, a name, your brand. Uh, under the recently amended companies fees regulations of 2024, uh, before to reserve a business name, you pay 35,000 uh, in the name of the proposed, uh, in the name that you, uh, the, in the name of your proposed name, and then you submit to the uh, OBRS, which is the online business registration system. And uh, the payment is actually, assessment is done automatically, and you can actually pay using your mobile money or even Visa card. And if for those who find it uh, possible, you can also pay uh, via the bank at the account. Uh, basically, the first step to have, you have to create an account on the online uh, business uh, registration system. Uh, I know some of you are wondering how do you get, uh, how do you access uh, this uh, this this portal? Um, it's through obrs.urs.b.go.ug and slash uh, search. Uh, and under that, uh, there will be an, there's an interface that shows login and create account. So the first step you need to do is actually create uh, an account. Uh, for yourself, an individual account, whereby you're, you're required to enter an email and a phone contact. Uh, one thing you need to note is when you're creating this individual account, enter an email that you yourself actually can have access to. An email where you always, uh, uh, you always check that email and you know the password to that email. And also a phone contact that actually can access messages and it's your phone contact, not anyone else. This avoids uh, the back and forth of like, I'm not receiving any information, I'm not receiving any documents. It's because you've used someone else's uh, email address or contact. So make it a point to ensure the email and the contact belong to you for easy access to this information because everything, um, all the feedback is sent to your phone or your email. So under this, once you've created your individual account, uh, you will be required to create, uh, to fill in a statement of particulars uh, where you enter the name of the business uh, that you want, uh, the registration, um, the nature of business, uh, in case of a firm, whatever name that you uh, that has been reserved that you're happy with um, as a client, then uh, the details, uh, your personal details, the nature of the business, and then also you have to sign the owner, the particulars of the people on that form should sign that form. Uh, for future purposes, uh, in case you're doing continuous transaction with URSB, and we need to compare and verify these signatures for these documents. Um, then, uh, in case in the uh, in the event one person signs, there's a requirement for a commission of oaths to witness and the said document. That particular part is at the back of the form after filling in the front page and signing. At the back, there's a requirement for the commission of oaths to witness uh, that document. Um, and then you're required to attach your national ID. Basically, it's a must for all Ugandans to have NIN numbers or a national ID. Uh, and if you're a foreigner registering a business name, you attach a valid passport. And then for refugees, you require you can uh, attach um, uh, the refugee ID from uh, the prime minister's office. Uh, that's valid for a valid ID from uh, for refugees. Then for uh, East, members of the East African community, you can attach valid uh, national IDs from countries of origin only for the East African community countries. Then you make these submissions uh, online. Uh, one thing going forward, once you register um, uh, your business name, uh, one of the new amendments uh, under business names, you have to file what they call statement of business continuity. Uh, where the firm or individual with a business name registered under the act shall in every calendar year, you file a statement uh, with the registrar confirming that the firm or individual is carrying on business, basically to show us that the business is actually operating still in existence. It's a form of compliance uh, under the law. And it's now one of the requirements that business names need to actually uh, provide to URSB in every year. Um, basically, um, as earlier mentioned, some of these fees were actually amended. So to register a business name uh, is 55,000. 
and then uh, to certify a certificate of business name is 35,000 and then certification of the form, the business name form is 35,000. So as earlier mentioned, reservation is 35, uh, then registration 55, then certification of the different business name documents is 35,000 for each. Um, for partnerships where you have, because uh, it's a partnership, one of the other requirements that you need to attach or do after registration is uh, register a partnership deed under the Documents Act, which is at a fee of 50,000, and you submit online. And apologies, it's, apologies, this is a typo. It's 55,000, and you submit it online uh, as a, a legal document. Uh, this basically, the partnership deed lays out the terms uh, between, the, the lays out the terms of the partnership deed, what it will be doing, how it will be uh, seized. Basically, it's just giving how the partnership will run and, uh, and how it will be managed um, uh, in the in its time of work as it's as it's as it's uh, existing as a partnership. Um, uh, I know some of you are wondering what if I register a business name, but later I want to become a, a company limited by shares, and now my business has grown, you've made profits, and now you want to go for something bigger and maybe uh, do bigger contracts. Uh, well, yes, it's possible. You can actually convert. Uh, from a business name into a company. Uh, basically, you file what they call a notice of cessation of the business name, uh, which is at a cost of 35,000. Uh, you submit online. Remember, you created your account. So basically, all this is done by you uh, in the comfort of your home. So you do all these submissions as you the owner of that uh, business or entity. So you submit the notice of cessation to URSB on the online portal. And then uh, you're required to return the original certificate for cancellation. And once your business is seized, then you go through the procedure for registering a new company, uh, uh, which we are going to next uh, in our next presentation. Um, basically, registration of companies, there are different types of companies we register. Uh, we have what they call uh, single member companies. Um, then we have what they call private, uh, company private by shares. Then we have companies limited by guarantee. Uh, and then we have the public companies. And then, of course, the building societies. Uh, however, I know, I know most of you uh, find the single member company something new. Uh, basically, this is um, basically a single member company is a company that has only one shareholder. You have the sole, uh, sole uh, shares in the company, the 100% shares ownership in this company. And uh, the reason behind this was to enable people to actually run, who are to run a company as they themselves, if you're able to, for purposes of convenience and business continuity, to also um, remove the, the hindrances of someone having to run a company with someone else who actually can't be accessed. So this was introduced in the New Companies Act of 2012, whereby someone can actually run a company as a single member. And the differ another difference with a private limited company for such companies, in your name, you have to indicate, indicate SMC. So for example, if I'm registering a company called Charlotte Enterprises Limited, I have to say Charlotte Enterprises SMC Limited on all my documents and on your name. So when you're reserving, you have to ensure you indicate uh, SMC on your company name for purposes to identify that you want to be a single member uh, company. Then uh, secondly, you're required to file what they call uh, a form one, um, appointing a nominee and alternate director uh, for this company. Uh, basically, the, the, the reason why you need to appoint a nominee or alternate is in case the single member dies or uh, is incapable of running this company for different disabilities or different situations, this nominee director comes in to actually enable uh, help in the management of this company and also effect transfer uh, of ownership uh, to the next person. For example, if you're deceased, uh, this nominee director is supposed to effect transfer or transmission of this ownership to a uh, person with a legal representative or someone who holds letters of admin that you get from the uh, 
from the Administrator General's office. So that's the, the, the purpose of appointing a nominee director. However, um, one thing you need to note is a nominee director should be someone you actually trust someone you know that will do this and manage your company effectively and do what is required. Don't just say, oh, they want a nominee director and you just appoint anyone randomly. No, it should be someone you know who will actually do what is required of him under the law and ensure that does not uh, steal from the company, does not mismanage the company and will actually uh, manage it well and um, transfer ownership to the rightful people as per the law. Then the alternate director comes in if the nominee director is not available, equally available, or the nominee director is also dead. So the alternate nominee director comes in to do the same, uh, the same, um, the same uh, powers to as a nominee director. However, also you need to appoint someone who actually will manage your company well in case you're deceased to avoid legal uh, legal issues on ownership, mismanagement of your company with your legal representatives or beneficiaries. Um, uh, basically, before registering a single member, you have to also reserve your name uh, in the name that you prefer. And this name should be desirable um, in the opinion of the registrar, shouldn't be similar to any other existing names, shouldn't be confusingly similar. We have to note it should, be, should not be confusingly similar to any other existing uh, entities registered uh, on our register. And to reserve the name is 35,000, and it takes 30 days in our system. If 30 days expire before you register, uh, it's the same effect. Your name will be, uh, your name expires and it will be uh, removed from the system. Uh, best, now, registration for a, a single member company has different uh, figures uh, basing on your company share capital. So if your share capital is between 1 million and 5 million, your registration fee is a standard 105,000 as per the new uh, company regulation fees of 2024. So do not, if in case you run into someone say registration is this figure, no, it's a standard fee. It's not negotiable. It's provided for, it's provided for by the law. It's provided for by the law. So it cannot be reduced. It cannot be increased. So registration for uh, share capital of one to 5 million is 105,000. However, if your share capital is above five million, uh, your your share your registration fee will be one point five percent of that share capital, uh, and that will be the total of uh, that such a company. So I'm going to like basically I'm giving you an example. If you have if your share capital is six million, so it will be five percent, um, one point five divided by a hundred. Let me 1.5 divide by 100 times uh, the share capital of 6 million. So basically, the registration fee for such a company will be 60,000. So it will be now imagine your, your registration fee is um, above is 60 as per the new regulation fees. Then stamp duty is 0.5% of share capital plus 35,000. That is also a standard figure that you shouldn't be in case someone tries to increase or lie to you the cost. So when you look at these calculations, it can help you and guide you calculate how much in total it will cost to register a company of the different with the different uh, share capitals. Um, then the forms for appointment of a nominee and alternate director is 35,000. Uh, then to appoint directors, a form 20, uh, is 35,000. Uh, one thing you need to note regarding directors, appoint directors and secretary in a single member company, you can actually be a sole director. So the sole shareholder can also be the sole director. However, you cannot be the secretary. So if you're the sole director, you can't be the secretary. So in case you want your company to have a secretary, you will be the sole director and appoint someone else as a secretary. But it's not a must to also have a secretary in a single member company. So basically, you can be a sole director without a secretary. So those are the different, basically, you're running your company as you, the, the single member in that company for, easy, uh, for convenience and easy management. Uh, then you have uh, the form 18, which is notice of location. 
uh, which is mandatory for each company to have its uh, location or post box address and to register this form it's 35,000. And uh, resolution, any form of resolution, but uh, in most cases at registration, most companies want to register their resolution for account opening for different transaction. As you know, uh, most entities want to transact and need details of the bank account of the company, not you as the individual. So to register such uh, resolutions, it's 35,000. And to certify any document for any company, that is 35,000 for three copies. So if you want to certify your certificate of incorporation, three copies uh, go for a total of 35,000 shillings. Um, now, upon uh, you, upon uh, as uh, earlier information, you'll be you're required to uh, to attach your identification, which is a NIN number or a NIN number. If you don't have the physical ID, you can enter the NIN number and get a confirmation letter from NIRA, uh, which is very easy. You do it online uh, to get that letter. Then um, a passport for valid uh, for valid uh, for a valid passport for foreigners. And nowadays also, the driving permit can work only on condition it has a NIN number. As you know, now the uh, passports and driving permits bear your NIN number. So as long as you have a valid NIN number and it's on your passport or driving permit, that's okay. You can also attach uh, those documents. Then for refugees, it's your ID from uh, the refugee ID. And then for um, the, East of countries, uh, the East African community countries, you can also attach your valid uh, national IDs. Uh, one thing you need to note, uh, the standard format for memorandum uh, of association for a single member company is provided for in the first schedule. Uh, basically, single member companies have their own standard memorandum of association that you're required to file that govern them and uh, manage such companies. You do not use the same, um, you do not use the same template as provided for in the Companies Act, no. The one in the Tech Companies Act is for com private companies, uh, private companies that are not single member. Um, our next is the registration of a private limited company, which is not a single member. Uh, basically, the, the only difference between the two is for such a company, you do not have SMC uh, on your name. And then secondly, you're more than one shareholder. Basically, you're not a sole, a sole shareholder. You can have... Uh, more than one uh, shareholder uh, ownership uh, in that company, but the fees and the payments, basically it's the same thing as uh, a single member company. So I will not be going through that uh, again for purposes of time. And then for a private company, you're not required to file a nominee uh, or alternate. Uh, you're, not support, you're not required to file a form one appointing a nominee and alternate director. Uh, because you have other uh, members or shareholders in that company who can uh, enable the continuous uh, management of the company and transition to your beneficiaries or legal uh, representative. Uh, you're also further required to attach a mean, basically all the identification earlier uh, mentioned, you're required for such companies uh, to. And then also the memorandum and at the memorandum of association for a private company is strictly provided for in the Companies Act uh, in Table A. Um, our next type of company is uh, a company limited by guarantee. Uh, basically, these are uh, non-profit entities. Uh, as you see, uh, they are not, nothing to do with shareholding. Uh, and basically, and under, under the NGO Act, before you go to do any transaction with the NGO, you're required to come to URSB and register your company as a, a company limited by guarantee. So these are the types of companies that we register that are non-profit uh, oriented uh, entities. Um, and also to register such companies, you're required, basically you can have an association. You have uh, maybe uh, the different types of associations. I think you've heard of the uh, Writers Association, the, the artists, musician associations. So those are the ones that we actually register as companies by guarantee. So we also cater for such uh, entities uh, at URSB. Um, it's also, you also require to reserve your name uh, as earlier guided, and it also costs 35,000, and it should be in the name of basically you can have, um, I think you have ideas of the different uh, 
uh, uh, musicians and artists and uh, writers associations uh, in Uganda. And I know they are registered uh, with URSB as companies limited by guarantee. Um, now for companies limited by guarantee, uh, you also have to prepare a memorandum and articles of uh, association, which give uh, the objects of this uh, entity. Uh, however, one thing you need to note for such companies when you're drafting your objects, your objects, uh, your objectives should be, or your objects clause should be non-profit oriented. Basically, you're not, uh, you're not uh, registering the company to make profits or to run any form of business. No, these are, because they are non-profit oriented entities, your objects clause should reflect that actually that's the, what, that's, uh, that's the activity you're going to do. And it should be very clear and spelled out in your objects clause to actually match what exactly you're reserving or registering. And then uh, you have to enter the particulars of the subscribers uh, it's important that all the subscribers sign sign these documents, both the articles and memorandum of association. Uh, you indicate their occupations and what they do. It has to be clear information regarding the subscribers. Um, then the standard format for companies limited by guarantee is different from company, single member companies and companies private by shares. Uh, uh, it's provided in a second schedule to the Companies Act and then you adopt table C part two. To be particular, it's called it's table C part two of the company uh, of not having a share capital. And then you're required to attach the different identification uh, and then also alien ID for refugees and then uh, valid national IDs for East, uh, members of the East African community. Uh, basically the fees uh, for the fees for companies limited by guarantee differ from the first two companies, the types of companies we talked about, the private by shares and a single member company. The reservation fee is a standard for all, which is 35,000. Then um, the stamp duty is 35,000. Then the registration fee is 105,000. And then to register all the other forms and resolutions, it's 35,000 for, 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 for each form and resolution, catering for three, the three copies. And then the certification of the documents, which is 35,000. And then all these transaction changes depending on the method selected. Uh, we do registration of uh, foreign branch offices. Uh, these are basically foreign companies where, let me say, for example, a company is registered and incorporated in Kenya uh, and they want to, do, to open up a branch office here in Uganda. Uh, we actually register those as foreign uh, companies uh, where you submit certified copies of your memorandum and articles of association, charter, or constitution, uh, basically, or an instrument defining what the company does and its objects and the owners in the company. Uh, you, it has to be certified from the country of origin, and then you bring those copies to URSB, of which uh, uh, your company is later registered, and then... Uh, a certified copy of the certificate of incorporation from the country of origin. Like I gave an example of Kenya, you bring a certificate from Kenya that's certified, and then you're required to file forms 13. Basically, form 13 shows you have no uh, charges or mortgages uh, existing. Uh, then uh, form 24, 25, 26. Uh, basically, form 24 lists of directors and secretary of directors and secretary who will be running and managing the branch office here in Uganda. You enter their details. They're not the directors in the other country in the country of origin. It's the list of directors and secretary who manage the branch office in Uganda. Then Form 25 gives the list of persons to accept service on behalf of company. Uh, in case there's uh let me say uh in case you have a court case, or there are some documents that need to be uh, serviced onto the company, like a notification or information passed on to the company. Uh, Form 25 gives us the list of that person who will actually take up that responsibility. Then Form 26 provides for the location of the branch office, uh, where the physical location, or and if the company has a box post box number, you have to indicate uh, the postal address. Uh, basically, uh, to register, 
uh, the certified copy of uh, the, the memorandum or a constitution for such a company is 350 US dollars. And it cuts across all forms of foreign companies. It does not uh, say, oh, I'm from this country. No, it's for all forms of foreign countries. And this fees doesn't go down, doesn't go up. It's just as provided by the law, uh, the new newly amended uh, companies fees registration act, uh, I mean, regulations of 2024, it's a standard 350 US dollars. Uh, then uh, registration fees for the four company forms that I had mentioned earlier, the 13, 24, 25, and 26, it's uh, in total, okay, each form is 70 US dollars, so in total it's 280 USD. Then the registration of a resolution is 70 US dollars, and then certification of any documents, foreign document is uh, US dollars 30, and these fees are payable as per the URA foreign exchange. Basically, depending on the foreign exchange, on that day registering, uh, it depends for, uh, as per URA rates. Um, I know I've given uh, so much information regarding registration, uh, but uh, the benefits, you need to also know, understand the benefits. Why should I register? Why should I go all through those processes? Uh, yeah, uh, and I need, uh, why should I, I know some people ask, why should I go all through those processes? What are the benefits of formalization? Why should I leave the informal sector? Uh, basically, the, the main, one of the, the benefits is you trade in your own name. Uh, you trade, it's a unique identifier uh, of, your trans, of your business and what you do. Uh, basically, um, imagine if you had two entities uh, existing with, a, with, a same, um, with the same name. Uh, for example, you have Charlotte Enterprises Limited and then there's, there's uh, Charlotte Limited. So you see, these are not unique and you're not trading in your own name. So it can cause even confusion to uh, existing entities. For example, if one of the entities um, has maybe um, a fraudulent, like it uh, has committed loads of fraudulent transactions, because of this confusion, they can actually come for, uh, for your company, or it, even have, it, it prevents you from having any legal issues with this other entity that already exists before you. So you need to have a, a unique uh, identifier that you trade in your own name that, you, uh, that people, customers or clients can actually identify you as you're the person who does this transaction. We know we want to go to this entity for a certain business because of its unique name. That's who you are and you trade in that name. Then uh, when, you, when you formalize your business, you own and transfer property. And you can further, um, in the process of owning and transferring property, you can, uh, as a business, you don't own it as you as the individual in that, be, uh, in that business. Basically, Charlotte does not own the property. It's actually the company that owns. You have a legal, you become a legal person. You know, you become a legal person that can own and transfer property uh, in different uh, aspects. And then also you can uh, financial uh, financial assistance. Basically, you get loans from uh, the bank. You can get access to loans uh, for to expand your business. Uh, in case, uh, for example, you want to uh, borrow money to buy products uh, to expand, you have a transaction you need to do, and it uh, requires a lot uh, a lot of products. But you don't have the capital, but you can borrow from the bank and acquire these uh, products. You go to the when you go to the bank, the first thing they ask, do you have a are you registered? Where is the certificate of registration? Or where is the certificate of incorporation? Where are your memorandum and articles? And if you're not formalized or registered, you end up missing out on these opportunities. And thus you're not expanding as a business or as a company. And then you can sue or be sued in your own name. They do not go for the owners. When you're formalized, they can they go for the company and you can sue as a company. Uh, for remedies uh, in different uh, forms. And then also, it enables you to take part in the bidding processes uh, for provision of goods and services. Uh, so basically, in case there's a contract uh, and you apply for a contract to bid uh, for bidding and you win this contract to supply a large sum of products or to produce something, um, depending on what you do, uh, you, you miss out if you're not formalized and actually actually you find that you can actually um, you can keep up and actually produce 
or supply the said products or provide the said services as required. But because you're not formalized, you miss out on these opportunities and thus your company does not expand or grow. Uh, you remain a small entity uh, because you're not formalized. Um, then also it's a form of continuity as a business entity because the fact that um, if you're deceased, your company, there's form of continuity. It's, it can be inherited. It's basically when you own shares in a company, it's form of property too. So you can transfer ownership and your beneficiaries can benefit. I'm going to, I'm going to give a perfect example of Madvani. I know, you know, Madvani existed before. So many of us even were born, but um, you've seen how there's, there's, it has continued existing up to now, it still exists. So it, it, uh, it enhances business reputation and continuity. There are so many businesses that exist. It's just I wanted to give the example of the Madvani group that uh, because it's, uh, it was formalized, you see it, there's, it has its reputation, but also there's form of continuity. There's inheritance, people come in, gain the shares and the company is still growing and it's still in existence. Um, and then also we can you can have access to both local, national and international markets. Uh, you basically don't, you do not operate just within Uganda. You can actually now do transactions across borders, you know, with our neighboring countries, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, you can uh, supply uh, different types of products in different markets and compete uh, favorably with different uh, uh, entities. Um, posting, post, uh, usually after registration, uh, after you don't, uh, after registration, there are different transactions you need to do or comply to. Uh, don't register your company and sit back and be like, oh, now I'm done. No. Basically, of course, at some point, directors need to change. And of course, with time, you have to always file documents or amendments with URSB called resolutions and the different forms to notify us of these changes uh, in your entity. Even the address, when you decide to change your, your address or place of location, always file a notification uh, to the registrar to notify us that, you know what, I've moved from Kampala or I've moved from Nakawa, now I'm in Bugolovi. It's a purposes of uh, updating and also compliance as required by the law. And then also bank resolutions. Uh, one thing I know, once you operate, you can decide to have different bank, uh, you need to open up different bank accounts uh, for different uh, transactions or entities. So you need to file bank resolutions. Don't file one resolution for one bank and know that you're done. No, for each bank account you're trying to open in any account, uh, in any bank, you're required to file what they call bank resolutions, where you're notifying of the signatories, people who will have access, how many signatories will be, uh, uh, will have access to this bank. It's for purposes of compliance and transparency. And then also changing shareholders. Sometimes you can decide for purposes of investors, or you want to get uh, people to invest in your business, you can transfer shares, sell these shares. So when you transfer shares, uh, you have to notify, uh, you have to notify URSB and file what they call transfer forms and the resolution to that effect. Um, one important thing I need you to note when you register, you have to always file what they call annual returns. Uh, basically in, uh, Annual returns are not for taxes. It's not the same as uh, the URA annual returns. Annual returns, in, in basic uh, explanation, it's these are this is a information you're trying to give the uh, to give URSB that first you're still operating, you're still existing, you're not dormant. Secondly, you're notifying us of the different changes or transactions that happened in the company for that period or for that year. Let me say. So basically, you have filed these annual returns annually. And each year, to file an annual, annual return for each year, it's 55,000. So if your company was incorporated in 2020, you need to file annual returns for 2021 to show us in summary, the status mm, of that company. Who are the directors in that year? Who are the shareholders? And in case changes happen, you give that information that no, changes happen and these are the, now the new shareholders. Basically, it's like an update to, uh, to, to, the, to the registry. And failure, uh, basically, and failure to file annual returns for more than five years, well, as per the law, it will lead to us striking off your company from the register. Um, for purposes of governance, uh, ensure to, uh, to practice separation of powers, uh, have different people for different functions. 
to avoid legal issues and to avoid wrangles and mismanagement and also for purposes of transparency in the, uh, in the company and always have audits, uh, audit books, accounts, basically have your information in order, uh, especially uh, when it comes to when you have to file your tax returns. If you have your audit books and accounts in order, and let me say in that year, you did not make profits, but you have everything in order, the details of the transactions you've done, you can always notify URL, I didn't make profits. This is how, these are my books of accounts. These are the audits I have. So in that year, basically you maybe can enter, even you say you, you, did, you didn't make any profits to help you like update your tax returns with URA to avoid paying huge sums of money as penalties or even taxes. So always have your books of uh, accounts and your audits, and then your information in order and ready in a file. Um, before I close, um, there's some new, uh, what they call beneficial ownership information. Uh, basically, uh, this is uh, something that uh, for reasons to fight, uh, to fight uh, uh, anti-money laundering and uh, to fight anti-money laundering and financing of tourism. Uh, this is one of the main uh, steps and laws that has even uh, pushed amendment of the legal, uh, one of the legal reforms we've had in URSB. And uh, basically beneficial owner is uh, defined as a natural person who has a final ownership or control in a company or a natural person on whose behalf a transaction is conducted. Uh, basically, I'll give an example. You can have a company uh, where your two owners, you both have 50-50. On the face of it, your two people. But the person, you may find this, the person behind who has sole control, sole voting rights. Basically, they tell you what, to, but basically you're not a shareholder, but you have the sole control and voting rights and ownership in that company. Or you can have someone who has 90% shares and then the other person has 10. But that person who has 10 actually has 100% control and vote, voting rights in the company. So that's the information we need. Uh, basically, who's controlling, who's that person behind that company? Uh, that's what beneficial owner uh, is. So under the law, the new law, before you even register a new company and before your application is approved, it's a requirement. Uh, to file beneficial ownership information. And then also uh, when updating your company as uh, the process has been happening, you're required to file beneficial ownership company because URSB is an accountable person to fight anti-money laundering and uh, counter uh, financing uh, terrorism uh, in, in Uganda. Uh, so that's it from me. Uh, in case, uh, basically, we have so many offices all over Uganda, of which our main office is at uh, Kololo, Plot 1, Baskerville. Uh, we also have a branch office, uh, Georgian House, first floor. And then we also have a Posta Uganda, main building, counters, two and three. Then we also have uh, regional offices. We've gone regional to make it easy for our clients to access us so that you don't have to come all the way to Kampala, Kololo or Georgian House, or Posta Uganda. Uh, we have offices in Bale, uh, Mbarara, uh, Gulu, Arua, Masaka, and the most recent one, which is Hoima. So we are trying to grow as an entity and institution to reach out to our different customers all over the region. So uh, that's it from me, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Charlotte, uh, for such a wonderful presentation uh, and detailed as well when it came to the processes uh, that are involved in business registration. We do have a few questions uh, that have come through the Q&A and I also want to ask uh, for our participants, if you want to ask your question uh, using your microphone, if you want to unmute, uh, you can raise your hand uh, or put it in the chat section and then we'll have you unmuted that if you if you prefer to use that option and not the Q&A option. Um, Chloe Sima Elizabeth says, um, I tried to register my company as an incorporated company, but that option wasn't there. How do I register as an incorporated company if possible? And I don't know if this is clear or Chloe, maybe if you'd want to throw more light on this as well. Um, but I don't know if it's clear to you, Charlotte. 
Um, I try. Let me try to answer. Um, I think uh, to register my company as an incorporated company. Well, okay, on the OBRS system, basically all companies are incorporated if you've actually registered. But if it's a new process, probably maybe you had to be uh, you you have to be clear on what type of entity I think you want to register. So if you say you want to register your incorporated company, maybe she means to that update her company and uh, migrate it to the online system. Because if you're if you're incorporated, then you don't need to register. If an already incorporated company, you do data update, not registration. So that's what that's what I'm trying to pick from that. I don't know if maybe she can be more clear and elaborate on exactly what uh, the question is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. Chloe, uh, I hope that answers your question, but if not, you could just uh, clarify. You could use, still use the Q&A or if you want to unmute, you could uh, request to do so. Um, Frank Babadi asks, great presentation so far. My question is, if I have, if I have reserved the name as a partnership, or as a limited liability company by shares, can I convert it to a company limited by guarantee? Um, basically, unfortunately, um, this I'll just give the general law provided by the Companies Act. Unfortunately, you cannot, a company limited by shares cannot convert to a company limited by guarantee. However, a company limited by guarantee uh, can convert to a company limited by shares. So if you've reserved a name as a limited liability or a business name or a company limited by shares, and then later you realize you want to register a company by guarantee, you can probably always wait for the name to expire, especially if you want to use the exact name. Uh, you can wait for the 30 days to lapse, then you go back to the reservation, select company by guarantee, and then uh, enter the name that you want to register uh, your company by guarantee. But once you've reserved and done the registration process as a business name or company by shares, unfortunately, you cannot convert to a company limited by guarantee. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that uh, clarification. Uh, so got, yes, the, the recordings and the presentations will be made available uh, through uh, the, the team at Opportunities I hear, so don't worry about that. Um, an anonymous attendee is asking, I want to start a small film house or company in order to be on the safe side, should I register? But then I don't have money coming in, in to keep my subscription going. Charlotte, um, how would you advise? Um, you can, for starters, you can register as a business name uh, where you're the sole proprietor. Uh, you register as a business name as your business uh, grows and expands. Uh, so once you start making the profits uh, and making a lot of money and maybe getting investors interested in your small film house, because you know now film production is one of the growing um, growing businesses in Uganda, you can later then seize that business name and then convert into a company because now you're actually growing and you're becoming bigger. So that's the advice I think I would give you. So you can't don't feel limited that no, because I'm not I'm a small business, I'm not making I can't register no. It's actually possible now through registration, it actually to help your business grow and even get investors and people interested to uh, invest in your business. Thank you. Uh, I actually wanted to add on to that as well. Sometimes we look at a whole company and you're thinking, how do I start at that level? But uh, the beauty about what we have in our system is that you can start at business name level. And like Charlotte was making a presentation, it's quite affordable. Right now it's 35,000 if you're doing the name reservation and the registration. And uh, it may not have as many obligations or things to file like, like for a company. So if you feel like that is where you'd want to start from, it's uh, something you can consider. But what we encourage is that you formalize because we have had challenges where people come and say, I now want to register this name. I've been using this name for 10 years, but you can't register the name. Maybe because there's a similar name in the register or somebody just came and stole your name and also registered it as well, and, and it's, it becomes difficult. So to avoid all that, we usually encourage, formalize as, as low as possible as you can start with, with what you can within your means. As the business grows, you can always expand it into what you want to be. Um, Calvin Matovu is asking, 
do I have to have a lawyer in the process of registration? Well, this is, this is an interesting question. Well, uh, I think I would say yes and no. Uh, basically, at the end of the day, as a business person, you will need a lawyer to advise you on these legal requirements, these legal terms, uh, to understand, uh, basically to help you manage and run your company in terms of the legal uh, side aspect of uh, company law. However, also registration, at some, maybe at the start to register, you can also do it yourself. Uh, basically, that's why you see we advise you need to have give us information, your email and contact address. So even you as an individual, you can do the registration process, register your company, uh, start it up. But then at the end of the day, you will need a, a legal person for those, you know, you know, as a company, when you're entering into contracts, the different transactions you're operating, you will need a lawyer in your corner too. So at the end of the day, you need the lawyer. Uh, basically, basically, it's a yes and no question. I uh, hope I've answered that. That's the best I can do for that question. Thank you. Uh, but like you've mentioned, of course, usually it's a tricky one because uh, we're also aware usually when it comes to some lawyers that you approach, it's either costly or it becomes quite a lengthy process. Uh, but that's not the story, of course, for all of them. Um, but we do advise you can. One of the ways we have designed the system is that it's it's something, especially at registration, it's something that you can do uh, on your own. And maybe just to add on to that, I don't know, Charlotte, is it possible uh, to do maybe a small demonstration? You can share your screen. I can share my screen. Maybe uh, for an individual account, how it takes to to what it takes to reserve a name. You know, you have an account open and you want to reserve a name. At least just until that process maybe for the benefit of those that uh, have not interfaced with the system yet? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a testing system. I can just show them basically the where to go and then show them the email, but unfortunately, I cannot go through the whole, um, the whole process because I don't have a testing system and I cannot open up another company's information or account because this is private information that I can't use uh, for public uh, people, other people at the moment. All I right. can just uh, show them where to go, then what it looks like, what the interface looks like. Let me, let me do that. Yes, yeah, you can do that. So basically, uh, you can go to Google, you go to user portal. So uh, my apologies. Let me go back. So when you go to Google, you go to URSB user portal. This is the easiest and fastest way. Then you select your, this. Now, this is, the, this is the interface I was talking about. Now you can see uh, there's login, there's create account. However, you see there's also the services, you know, the different services. Before you even create an account, if you want to get information, you can go to the services. So you see all the services that we do. The, it even gives you the fee, the amount for the different, uh, the different services, for the business names, the different documents. So this gives you uh, the information before you even actually even create an account or you even log in. So that you, if you're looking for a specific service, you know what you're going to do. So now you see name reservation, companies, it's 35. So at least by the time you're creating an account, you have an idea of what you're, uh, what's going to cost you and the information in brief. Basically, this is what I had actually presented. So when you do when you do that, you can then go to home, you create an account. The first thing is create an account. So basically, unfortunately, this is where I stop. So when you're creating this account, you enter the email, you enter your email and the phone contact. Please, I'll, oh, I always emphasize, please enter an email account you can also access. Enter a phone contact that you can access. This, this will enable you to have access to these documents 
and to if you give someone else's email then later you're like oh my god i'm not getting these documents i'm the owner of the company then you know the back and forth basically delays you and then also you you gives you a, a bit of a headache okay. so once you enter your email your phone contact you register you get a notification on your email plus an otp whereby it will further now require you to enter a password now when you get the password hmm, once you've created that account and you've entered the password, you go to log in. Now, for logging in, before you actually register or your application is approved, you're logging in as an individual. So it's your individual account. So you enter your phone contact and the password you've created. Please never, don't forget your password. You can even note it somewhere. So once, let me say, you've reserved your name, you've finished registration of your company, uh, usually it will now require you to create a password for your business account. So once you've registered and you get a registration number, you log in, your username is your business registration number plus the password you've created. So basically in brief, unfortunately I can't take you through in detail, but in brief that's the idea uh, of what the portal looks like and how to use it. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. Um, there are a couple more questions as well coming in. Uh, like Charlotte, like I mentioned before, course, we're dealing with people in the creative sector, particularly film industry professionals. And so someone is asking, this is Miss Sheila. She's asking, I want to start a YouTube channel for my films. Do I need to register or it's only about creating a channel? And that is it. Uh, for YouTube channels, we do not register YouTube channels. So that one, you can start your channel and register. However, I know sometimes, you know, social media, once your YouTube channel grows and it becomes big, maybe at some point you may now do, need to do the physical, other things, other activities, and maybe your thing can grow. So if your YouTube channel has a unique name and identifier, you can be like, you know what? Since my YouTube channel has grown, why can't I start up a company or business in this name? So that now I go do physical, you know, and then at the end of the day, what if you start shooting short films, physics, you know, some of these are the ideas, but we do not register YouTube channels, but it doesn't stop you from uh, registering something that identifies you because you can start a YouTube channel, you're hitting, it's your trade name, you don't register. You know, there are people who are smart, they will go register and enter your business name in that exact name you're using in your YouTube channel. And then they'll they will want you to actually buy the name from them. So when you're going to start these also businesses, think about those the, the future, what will happen. Because what if that YouTube channel becomes famous and you're actually uh, getting loads of followers? So when that happens, run immediately and register that uh, the business. Or even register it with intellectual property as a, what? As a trademark or a name uh, to protect it. So yeah, that I would advise you to do that. Thank you. You actually preempted that. I was also going to encourage uh, pursue other forms of registration as well because there is a way you want your channel to be recognized via a logo, different branding, and so on. So on top of the business name company registration, you can also consider trademark registration as well uh, for, for how you want to be uh, recognized. Calvin is asking, after registration, should I expect taxes on my returns? And I believe Charlotte had talked about this as well when she talked about returns. They are different from the URA returns, but I'll later just elaborate on that as well. Charlotte? Uh, yes, basically the tax returns from URA are different, the ones from URSB. So for us, the, what they call annual returns that will require you giving us uh, information, brief information on that company for that period. That's why they are called annual returns. So if you registered in 2020, and you're required to file, and because you're required to file annual returns in 2021, you're giving us details of who are the directors in 2021, who are the shareholders. If there are if there are any changes, you give us that information. And to register such is a standard, uh, fifty-five thousand. We do not charge according to whether you are making profits or not. No, it's a standard fifty-five thousand to pay for those uh, annual returns for the year. All right, thank you. Just a takeaway, of course, like she has mentioned again, uh, our returns, the URS returns are different from uh, the URA returns. That's a different um, platform as well, and I believe URA does quite a, quite a lot of sensitization on that as well. 
Um, Mutisa Josh is asking in case someone invades my company name or business name, does URSB take action for me or it requires my lawyers and a prolonged period of time or they, sh or they are shut down before the issue goes? Um, basically, in such cases, when you notice uh, someone is infringing on your name, it's actually the onus is on the own of the name. You come and notify us because, you know, sometimes we might not know. Uh, you come and notify us that actually uh, someone uh, is using my name. You know, there's a saying, fast in time, fast in right. So we consider all those factors. Uh, we look at who registered first, who came first. And if we notice uh, that your name has been infringed, we usually notify the other person who came last, who registered last, that they actually, uh, their name is similar. After, of course, it's the client who notifies us. Then we do further investigation and inquiries into the two company files. Then once it's... Um, once it's observed uh, where the issue is, we notify the, the company that's infringing on the other person's rights uh, regarding the name and we inform them that there's a name already similar that as a requirement by law, they need to change their name because uh, we, we have the powers to actually do that and rectify any form of record. So we notify the other party and request them to actually change their name, avoid uh, infringing on that person. If that uh, person refuses to comply you can also further now do legal through URSB. You can petition URSB, which is also another legal, if you don't want to go to court. If the, that person continues to infringe on your, on your name and doesn't comply, you can also now further go to the courts of law. At the end of the day, if the name is yours and you registered uh, first, you know, it's, it's, you're actually, uh, you don't even need to worry about how long it will take. At the end of the day, you'll be compensated by that person if they continue to infringe on your name and refuse to comply. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, I think you've understood that there are options as well that you can pursue uh, through our offices. There are some remedies that are available to you. Um, and then um, there is an anonymous attendee who is asking, I haven't understood the stamp duty. Uh, staff either wants to make a stamp for me after registration. So maybe Charlotte, you could just explain a bit more um, on stamp duty as well. Um, stamp duty is basically the fee you pay, I, I to explain, I'm going to explain it in simple, simple terms. It's basically a fee that's generated by URA you pay to register a company. Basically in those short, you know, for example, okay, I'm going to give the most common example. You know, in case you're, you have, uh, you're going to, let me say, you're going to pay a driving permit also. You know, there's that URA airport or there's a stamp duty I think you pay to register to get a driving permit. You know those stamp duty fees we pay for those different transactions uh, for any service for the government. So that's what they call stamp duty. However, when your company is, we do not make stamps for you. When you register your company, you that's different. Now you go, and now once your company is registered, now it's every, any other transaction is now up to you. You can go enjoy your company and do any other transaction. You can go create stamps for yourself. You can go create invoices. You can basically that's on you uh, as a person or as a company. All right. Thank you. And then uh, finally, uh, Calvin is asking to throw more light on trademark registration. Uh, a lot of this was again discussed last week, um, but the process. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not so different actually when it comes to company registration because it all starts with a search. You have to search for your, because trademark registration firstly deals with your logo, how you are visually represented. When somebody sees the logo, they can associate it with the goods that you offer or the services that you offer. And that's a different register that we have here at URS with a trademark register. So you conduct a search um, for that logo. Uh, and if it's available, in other words, if if one, if it is not similar to any other marks in the register, or if it is also distinctive, like it stands out, uh, it doesn't exactly describe what you're doing, like you are registering a logo of orange, oranges for, and you're dealing in oranges. That's something that's very, very descriptive. Um, so if, if it stands out, if it's distinct as well, and it can pass, if it's not similar uh, to other marks or logos uh, within our register, dealing in the same things that you're dealing with, eh? similar things uh, then it's something that can pass and the process goes on we give you a notice you publish and then you register it 
it's after 60 days. So that's uh, different. But when it comes to uh, reserving your name, I think like Charlotte had mentioned in her presentation, reserving the name does not mean that you have registered your company. Uh, it just means that at least you're booked within 30 days, you have that period to register your company fully. So reserving is it's like you're just booking your spot, but if those 30 days expire, then that name is basically up for grabs. Somebody else can, can come and take that name. Charlotte, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I think you've done justice to the question, so that's good. That's okay. All right. Um, yes, I can see the questions keep coming in, uh, but I hope we can wrap this up as well, at least within the next uh, five minutes or so. Uh, so I see at least finally here, Juma is asking, I'm planning on registering my film company and an SMC, but currently I don't have inflows. Do I need to pay all those fees? Thanks. Um, yeah, Julia, yes, Juma, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, unfortunately, if you want to register uh, your, your film company as an SMC, you're required to file all those fees. Uh, like Alia mentioned, you do you cannot bargain, you cannot reduce, you cannot increase the fee standard. It stays the same. However, if you're not getting yet inflows, like Alia said, advised, you can start with a simple business name. Uh, you register your business name, and then you keep uh, doing different um because it's actually for business name is cheaper to register so that you can it's like a stepping stone so that you can start doing different businesses. So as as your film camp your film business grows and you're actually bringing in inflows and making the money and making the profits, then you convert to in a company, SMC, as you want. So sometimes don't, if you cannot afford the company, do not jump straight to the company. Give yourself time. You know, sometimes business, you need to have patience. So you can start with a small business name. It grows, and as it grows, you convert to a, sing, a company as you want, the SMC. Uh, perfect, yes. Uh, again, start with what what I would say what you can chew, what you're able to chew. Uh, and the good thing is that URSP offers all these options as well for you. Um, Mr. Josh is asking, does business registration cover designs, blueprints, for example, I animate, but then I must make sure my scenes and characters don't look the same with others. So does it, designs matter when registering? Uh, Gisa, I, this falls largely within the realm of intellectual property, uh, like we covered last week. Uh, and if you're talking about animation and designs and cartoon characters and so on, this is usually within the realm of copyright, uh, largely because it's a creative works that you are doing, that you are engaged in. So they fall within copyright, and it's not exactly a requirement when you're doing business registration. Again, that's something that's different. Um, but with copyright as well, you can actually register your copyright in those works that you have created. Uh, and that is a process that we also offer. It's a service that we also offer for copyright registration uh, payment is 50,000 just for the application form as well. We'll also make all this information as well uh, available to each and every one of you. Uh, or you can also visit us as well uh, just for more information about this, but that's within copyright, that's within intellectual property, but not within uh, business registration. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, see Okay, there's one final, allow me just to answer this one final question uh, just before we close. How do I get copyright for my movies? Again, we covered a lot of this last week uh, in our presentation, intellectual property. Uh, the slides will also be made available, I think, through the team at Opportunities are here. But uh, copyright, once again, is um, automatic. Uh, it's automatic protection. In other words, the moment that you produce your movies, the moment you have your content, it's, it's really automatic. What we offer as URSP is registration of what you already have, which more or less confirms the protection that you already have. And there's nothing more authentic in this country than a certificate from the government office saying that you actually own copyright in something. So what we offer as URSP are registration services for the copyright in your movies. Uh, and that is something that you, you, can, you, you, you can pursue as well. So if you have your movies, uh, feel free to approach uh, again our offices you can always register the process is also online we have forms online that are accessible uh, to each and every one of you uh, you can fill in those forms put in the application and uh, have your copyright registered you will have a certificate of registration uh, for copyright in 
your works. Uh, so that's what you get from your RSP. It is a certificate of registration, but it's not like you are getting the copyright uh, exactly because the way copyright works is that the moment you have made your movie, you have written your book and all these things, the copyright is automatic. But what you come and do is register with us that you actually own this work and that you created it. Yes. Um, so thank you so much uh, for being a part of this webinar. Charlotte, once again, thank you so much as well um, for your time uh, as well in this webinar. Uh, thank you so much for a very informative presentation. Once again, the presentations will be made available and the recording. We are working with the team from Opportunities are here, and I'm glad that uh, Fiona as well is on call. So we have been in touch, and so she'll also be in touch with many of you in the industries. I'll, I've also been asked uh, to inform you uh, that season two registration is still going on for the for this project opportunities are here. So make sure that you register, tell a friend to register as well. We believe it is something that you will all benefit from as we work together to grow the creative industry. Thank you so much once again for your time. Uh, and we want to wish you a wonderful rest of the week and a weekend. Uh, once again, feel free to approach our offices at URSB. Our head offices, like Charlotte mentioned, are in Pololo, Plot 1, Baskerville Avenue. Feel free to approach us anytime in the week, just between 8 to 5 p.m. We are in office and working days. Thank you, and uh, have a wonderful day.